The United States had, by the 1970s, realized that the majority of their artillery was aging rapidly or just out of date. Open-topped, slow, vulnerable, based on obsolete chassis, the existing self-propelled guns in service were not suitable for a potential Cold War showdown with the Soviet Union, which had a more modern SPG force. Early development work took place under the program names Division Support Weapon System and Direct Support Armored Cannon System. The DSWS had changed by 1979 into the Enhanced Self-Propelled Weapon System program with the goal of producing a common platform for self-propelled artillery for the army. All of these programs were also grouped under the general name of Howitzer Improvement Program. This development was to make multiple strands. One was work commissioned from the firm of Norden to study improvements of the existing M109 fleet as well as examination of foreign systems in use or development. This included the French GCT and the multinational SP-70 project. The M109, a system developed in the 1950s and first fielded in 1963, was a prime candidate for upgrading or replacement. In 1980, the replacement for the M109, incorporating elements of the other programs, was underway, and after three years of work, several alternatives for replacement and modernization of the M109 had been evaluated as part of the Howitzer Improvement Program, known as HIP. Welcome to another Tank Encyclopedia Voice article. If you like our articles, you might want to check out our new Tank Encyclopedia magazine issue. It has five amazing Tank Encyclopedia articles covering stuff like the B1 Centauro, uh, the Lorraine 37L, or the Panzerbeobachtungwagen 3. Also, there's a plane article, a modeling article, and stuff from the archives. It all costs just $5, you can find a link in the description. With the multitude of acronyms involved before work had even begun, it is easy to become confused, but the HIP program laid general principles a future system would have to meet to be acceptable. Firstly and most importantly, the caliber was defined. It had to be a 155mm gun with a barrel length no less than 38 calibers long, or 5.89 meters, and not longer than 50 calibers, or 7.75 meters, capable of firing standard 155mm shells to 25 kilometers. High explosive rocket assisted ammunition would be available in order to extend this range to 30 kilometers. Shells would be loaded by means of an automatic loader system, reducing the crew down to a nominal four, with some optimism that it could be reduced to three and operated in an emergency by just two men. Not less than 50 rounds were to be carried with a target of up to 75 shells which, working with the automatic loading system, could deliver between 8 and 12 rounds per minute. If the automatic loading system was omitted and a manual system retained, then the rate of fire would drop to just 4 rounds per minute as well as impacting the number of crew required to operate the gun. The alternative consideration was a halfway house of a semi-automatic system rather than manual or fully automatic, with an estimated rate of fire between 4 and 8 rounds per minute. The desire was for a state-of-the-art system to meet the reliability, availability, maintainability requirements with computer-controlled and monitored systems. Fire control was to be by means of an onboard ballistic computer and computer-controlled gun motors. This combination allowed the system to fire, relocate to avoid counter-battery fire, and then fire again in under one minute. The ability to avoid enemy counter-battery fire was a significant improvement and step forward. Protection was to be just of an improved type over what, presumably, there already was in comparison on the M109, and the vehicle had to have an NBC overpressure system fitted as standard. A further note was that for self-defense, the vehicle would be provided with a single 50 caliber heavy machine gun on the commander's cupola. For mobility, the HIP required a new powerful engine, capable of delivering not less than 20 horsepower per ton, capable of propelling the various vehicles based on this chassis, 
to a road speed of 60 to 75 km per hour, to a maximum operational range of between 400 and 600 km. All vehicles had to be capable of transportation via a C-130 transport aircraft. Each SPG would have an associated and dedicated ammunition resupply vehicle with between 80 and 150 additional rounds of ammunition. This vehicle was to be based on the same chassis as the SPG itself, with a crew of 3 or 4 and the same level of protection. Another vehicle would be the Battery Operations Center, also based on the chassis with a crew of 7, and an armored maintenance vehicle with a crew of 2 and 4 mechanics. Each armored maintenance vehicle would carry spares, tools and even a complete spare power pack for the chassis. The vehicles were to be assigned to a battery at the rate of one armored maintenance vehicle per battery. A battery would therefore consist of three SPGs, three ammunition resupply vehicles, one battery operation center and one armored maintenance vehicle for a total of three guns, up to 675 155mm shells and between 28 and 45 men. HIP was to be an integrated part of all army divisions, replacing the vehicles already in service at a rate of one battalion to each army brigade. By 1984, the Food Machinery Corporation, or FMC, had made their own proposal to meet the demands of the HIP program, as specified under the name DSWS New Start. The basic arrangement of the proposal was an unusual looking vehicle, with completely fixed superstructure on the rear of the chassis. The engine was mounted in the front and the ammunition, in drums, set at the top rear of the casemate. The 155mm gun mounted into the superstructure was not completely fixed, and had the ability to move up to 5 degrees left or right. The driver sat forwards of the casemate in a raised structure which extended backwards along the hull into the casemate. This would permit him to come back into the fighting space rather than be isolated in the driving position. The chassis itself was mounted on seven road wheels with four return rollers and drive to the tracks delivered by a front-mounted sprocket. Power would be provided by an unspecified 700 horsepower engine. The requirement was for a 155mm gun, 38 to 50 calibers long, and FMC's design was for a 45 caliber weapon which was under development at Vatervliet Arsenal. The range required was 25 kilometers, 30 kilometers with rocket assistance, but this FMC proposal gave the maximum range with standard projectiles as 23 kilometers. Shells would be delivered via a fully automatic system feeding from two large drums, containing a maximum of 50 rounds divided equally, with one drum on each side of the breech. 50 shells was the minimum required by the program, but this FMC proposal could fulfill the other needs for full automation, including fuse setting, which was incorporated into the breech and was fully compatible with the existing 1 to 8 zone bag charge propellant system, or the then newly proposed 5 zone modular propellant. Shells would be reloaded via the ammunition resupply vehicle, via two large hatches in the rear of the vehicle. The DSWS project was cancelled by 1983. It was seen as being too expensive and too complicated. The focus would instead be on modernizing the existing M109 fleet, and the HIP project would roll on, sucking in more cash. For their part, FMC had produced a capable design whose biggest flaw was probably not the cost, but the lack of a turret. They had met almost all of the requirements set by HIP, and would try their hand at the M109 modernization instead, rolling much of their development work into a new M109. Like many of these multi-year huge contracts in the US, this one is an enormous project of overlapping requirements. The HIP program didn't end with the cancellation of the FMC DSWS New Start concept, it was still going on into 1991. This was the date by which the vehicles were meant to have been entering service, yet development hadn't even finished and only 8 prototype improved vehicles had even been made by 1989. The project was simply too large and phenomenally expensive. In 1989 alone, for example, the HIP program cost nearly $28.5 million and nearly $10.5 million in the following year. It didn't matter anyway for FMC. 
All work on a complete replacement for the project was terminated by 1984, with the decision being made at the time to simply modify the M109 fleet with new ammunition stowage and a longer range gun instead. The project was overall somewhat of a failure. No new vehicle was produced and a huge amount of money was spent. The opportunity for a new and more capable platform producing a new family of vehicles was lost. That's all for this video. Make sure to follow our website, we'll be releasing new articles on the regular. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or Reddit and if you use Discord there's a link to our community server in the description. Also, likes, comments and subscriptions on YouTube are greatly appreciated. If you would like to help us continue to develop and expand, also consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be used to help us enhance and design new articles and features for you. Until next time, keep us in your sights.